Today we're going to look at this HP Procurve access controller. The model is the 20WL. Uh, actually, the proper model number is the J8153A, but whatever. Who knows what their stupid names. <laughs> HP's pretty standard with these like J blah 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 A B names, but why do they have the 720WL? I don't know. Whatever. Uh, access controllers in general are uh, network devices which do things like uh, allow for remote logins and stuff, but who knows what they're actually using this thing for. So, uh, you know, I don't really care what it does. We're interested in the hardware, right? So, uh, on the front, you can see that this is clearly a reversed board because there's uh, Ethernet ports here and a serial port and an awfully suspicious panel with two screws on the side, which really really looks like it's a regular motherboard under here and we've got an LCD at the front there's also a power switch with uh, an on LED and a power LED and a hard drive LED and we've got some ports here uh, for Ethernet ports on a PCI card and yeah regular motherboard and I did open this up previously, and I think it's a Pentium 4. I didn't take it apart completely, but it looked like a Pentium 4 era board. So we'll uh, get it all open. As you can see, I've taken off a bunch of screws, but let's get some more off. These appear to hold the PCI slot cards. Huh. Weird. Around back, we can see that there's three large... 80 millimeter fans and a couple 40 millimeter fans on the power supply and not much else. With the top cover off we can see the rather chaotic mess of extra cabling and stuff in here. I mean this is just hanging here through this silly adapter, the power connector and it's like how hard is that going to be to bump into the fan while it's spinning, you know? And uh, we've got a riser card with PCI slots here, three of them. I guess they're all exposed. Sometimes there's extra slots and they're just not shown on the case just due to the height. And we can see all the fans and the long power supply. And this model does not actually have a hard drive. It's actually got a 256 megabyte uh, CF card. And uh, yeah, like I said, it looks like it's Pentium 4. I've plugged it in and it's making a lot of noise and nothing's actually happening. <laughs> the, the fans are running, including the CPU fan, but there's no activity on the LCD and I've got this monitor hooked up to it and the power switch doesn't seem to do anything. Let me see if I can shut it off with it. Nope. Alright, so I guess the uh, turn it on before taking it apart thing was really pointless. For some bizarre reason they have a metal clamp to just protect these connectors. These are the connectors to the front panel LEDs and the power switch. Why? Why is this here? I have no idea. Were they worried that they would get knocked around because the main ATX power connector wasn't uh, strapped down properly so what's the deal? I don't know. It was held in with two screws as well. So let me get all this stuff unhooked since the system clearly clearly does not boot. And the motherboard should come out now. Oh, oh, fan power connector. Oh good, there's a little splitter there. Those are always useful. Okay. Oh, wait, wait, wait. Got something hooked. Oh, another fan connector. Alright. One motherboard. Let's see if we can but get a better look at this stuff now. See, there's just a basic uh, CF card reader here, and it's a well, it's an ID uh, adapter actually. It's a passive one. Let's see if we can get it out. Yeah, pretty standard adapter. It's made by well, ID flash card uh, Vernier Networks. Huh? We've seen them before in other stuff. Oh well, it's, yeah, it's just a. Just a passive adapter, nothing too interesting. I did look on this CF card. 
it's some form of Linux because uh, I can't see it on my Mac OS system. Normally, if it's like BSD or something, it'll show up as a BSD volume even though I can't read it. This is like some weird ass file system that I can't read. There are so many extra power connectors on this power supply, it's crazy. Look, we've got the old power supply connectors, or like motherboard connectors, floppy drive connectors, the 4-pin Molex, uh, even the 8-pin for like a high-end board. Weird. There's just so many connectors coming out of the power supply. I might actually hold on to the power supply since it can power just about anything. I managed to get the system working. It turned out the CPU had come dislodged, so yeah, that kind of keeps the system from working. It's not a bad motherboard, actually. I mean, this is just a Celeron 2 gigahertz, but, you know, it's a tie-in motherboard, so it's actually half decent. And then I think there are enough people uh, looking for older stuff to maybe put this on eBay. We'll see. But, uh, you know, usually I don't bother with older stuff, but this is actually kind of a nice motherboard, which we'll, you know, take a look at in a second. But I'm glad it's working, at least. I went back and tested this thing with the CF card and I was able to boot up and guess the password for the login, which was admin admin. Anyway, uh, I uh, managed to get it to start up and boot into its operating system, which was the HP OS thing that they run. And it basically has a command line similar to a Cisco router, that sort of thing, you know, like show version, that sort of stuff. And it worked pretty well the first time, and I restarted and started filming, and it didn't work. It says there's no boot device. No idea why. <laughs> oh well, not too big of a deal. On the back of the board, we've got two uh, PS2 ports, four USB ports, serial, VGA, a parallel port, 100 base T, and a gigabit Ethernet port, both Intel. Uh, I assume one is being provided by the platform controller and the other one's being provided by this chip here. We've got five PCI slots. Uh, we have the riser giving us the three horizontal ones and an AGP Pro slot. And moving along, there's a Rage XL chip, which is just a basic video controller. And on the other side, we've got Parallel ATA. There's no SCSI on, or sorry, no uh, hardware RAID on this model. Uh, floppy drive port. Some memory, this is 128 megs of PC2100. For fun, I'll probably dig out some more memory and just run it with as much as I can if I'm going to sell it. And just to get rid of some memory, really. Uh, this particular board is actually a tie-in uh, S2099. And it seems like it's a fairly decent board. The chip, like I said before, is a Celeron 2 gigahertz, you know, single core, nothing special. It's an old chip. And the cooler is an actual Intel one. Ooh. On the front of the case is the LCD with the two buttons. Has a little Philips IC here, which is probably an I squared C to parallel converter because this cable connects to the LCD. And then that turns into these three connector, well, these three uh, wires on this connector, and then a single red connector. Uh, this goes to the power supply switch, and this goes to the funny adapter board. This takes the I squared C interface from the DDR slot, the memory slot, and converts it and, well, basically just runs it along a cable to the display. I've never seen a company use uh, so an adapter for the one of the memory slots. That is just crazy. Uh, not that there's anything wrong with it. Most companies tie off the uh, parallel interface and just run the signal through the parallel port. But yeah, this one's running it through I squared C through this ridiculous adapter. <laughs> kind of funny. I wonder if you could use this to like. I don't know what, what the deal is with memory in I squared C. Is it is it uh, sending data along it as well, like configuration data. Is this could you use this to monitor something about the memory? I doubt it, but I mean, since I squared C is apparently running along it, must be used for something on the board. Probably the uh, identification, because there's a small chip on every uh, DDR stick that has uh, its speed and whatnot. So that could be it. Here's one of the three fans, just a Sun on 80 millimeter, nothing too special. 
It's got the nice metal grill on it. This is on the inside of the case. Yeah, just three wire, nothing special. This is the riser board. Now this must be some kind of controller chip to split the uh, PCI interface over three uh, connectors because this is not for a standard riser. It's actually for a regular PCI slot. Normally this is like a special um, socket that's designed for your riser, but yeah. Seems like this card is able to uh, split the signal in some way. This is the included quad port. Uh, I think it's just 100 base T Ethernet. These are all Realtek controllers. Ugh. And it's got this funny large connector which looks like a Mini Fit Junior or whatever they're called, which uh, the same connector design is used for ATX power supplies. But this is all just GPIO ports. So. <laughs> never seen one of these connectors usually it's like a pin header or something for GPIO on a board but you know probably for stuff like uh, access lights or you can have it trigger stuff I decided to open this thing up anyway uh, like most SPI power supplies it's actually quite well put together uh, these caps are made by OST I haven't looked them up before uh, they seem okay some people say that they're you know mixed quality but you know these are all okay, and I assume Sparkle Power put in decent stuff. Tons of thermal paste on the big heat sinks. So I'm not going to go any deeper into this because I'm just going to get covered in thermal paste and stuff. And you can see that they've got a plastic shroud around the top, but they've cut out little sections of the plastic to let it interact with the uh, thermal paste so everything stays cool. There's also pads on it too. It's a pretty good 1U power supply. That's about it. Well, I think that's the end of it. I mean, it's pretty boring teardown. Not too much in it. The I squared C interface was kind of funny to the LCD. Decent tie-in motherboard, but it's a Pentium 4. Power supply is pretty nice, but you know, it's a gigantic 1U one. Like it it might be good for a bench supply, like I might keep it for that. But the problem with it is, I mean, not only is it super long. I mean, you could always like attach it underneath your desk or something, but uh, the big problem with that one is it doesn't have a power switch, and I really like having a power switch on a bench supply. I just, I don't know, there's something about it, I just, I like to have a bench supply with a power switch. I know HP stuff usually doesn't have too much stuff in it that's interesting, but I figured what the hell, it was under 20 bucks, take a look.